11 o'clock. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the August 10th, 2015 school board meeting to order. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. Mrs. Mayor, if you do the roll call, please. I'd be happy to. Lisa Collins. Here. Tim Menninger. Here. Gary Dunlap is excused, Used, right? Yes. Tom Cruise. Um, he is excused. I don't, we hadn't heard from him, so. All right. He may still be coming. Jeff Young, are you here? Here. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cheryl. Here. Anita Jekosinski. Here. And Kate Mayer, I'm here too. Okay, with five of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Board norms reflection, just a reminder, your board norms are in your blue folder if you want to take a look at those as we proceed through the meeting. Approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda was amended with a change to the personnel report on the 7th. So with that, I, are there any other changes to the agenda? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I would so move. Is there a second? A second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. nay. Motion carries. Uh, public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? Seeing no one, we will keep, continue to move on. Reports and discussion. Educational assistance, self-contained programming. Julie Krakow. Julie hi hi um, in your folder tonight you have an issue paper for an educational assistant position uh, this position is a little bit different than the positions I've, I've asked for in the past this is for self-contained programming um, in particular we have a student who um, is placed out of the district and needs to return to the district in order to do that um, he has some pretty high level need um, and we'll need an additional assistant with them. So that is why um, I'm here tonight asking for this position. Uh, we, can, we expect to continue to develop this program for our students who are placed out of the district so that we can bring them home uh, here to where um, we can provide better service for them. So um, I'm not sure if this is on the consent agenda tonight as well, I think it is. It is, um, I think, yes. Just because of the timeliness and having this person in place um, to start the school year. Okay, so since it's on the consent agenda, are there any questions we could ask Julie at this time? I had a question. Yes. Sorry, I've got a granola bar in my mouth, but um, wondering, could you just give an example of an out of the district, an alternative setting that you would be thinking about for self-containment? Um, give me an example of what that looks like. Uh, what at it another look facility, like here? or is it in someone's home, or is it? Could that be? The children who are placed out right now are at um, a variety of um, facilities. We have some at Chalita. Mm -hmm. We have some at um, Partners in Excellence. We have some at Cooley Connections. Okay. Um, this particular one needs to return home very quickly. And so we're, we're working to get a program established for this year for him. Thank you. Other questions? Okay, seeing none, then we'll move on to budget revisions. Julie Holman. It's a Julie kind of night. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, last August, Ben Miller brought forward to the school board the concept of revising budget after the fiscal year. Um, this is an allowable DPI practice and it has been confirmed with our auditor this year. It is common among school districts um, and it assists to reduce the year-end variances between original and revised budgets. And minimal variances can also have a positive impact on um, district bond rating in the future. Due to the vacancy in the position of Administrator of Business Services from October through March, budget revisions for the 2014-15 fiscal year were not presented to the board for approval. Um, the estimated um, change reflects a planned general fund deficit of $40,268. That is less than the previous deficit um, 
proposed in October of $84,897. This is due to lower than anticipated expenditures for 1415. Um, the attached 1415 revised budget summary is in the DPI format and it details the original budget and the revised budget as of June 30th, 2015, and it is presented for your approval. Okay, are there any questions? I did have a question, and I'm, I'm just trying to find it here as I was looking at this um, in the, there was a large um, decrease in one of the expenditure or total revenues. I'm sorry, I was trying to pull this up here quickly. The uh, undifferentiated curriculum, I think, has a large difference on that. Could you explain just a little bit about, because that's a, a fairly large number. To the best of my knowledge, Tim, um, based on the fact that I didn't create the budget last year, um, it seems to me that there was a contingency in wages for um, teachers, and maybe it was because there was unfilled positions. I'm not sure exactly, but there was a, a, a budgeted amount put in the budget to account for anticipated hiring. Um, and when it all sort of shook out and we distributed it to the appropriate curricular areas, um, we reduced it from that contingency code. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, and that is also part of our consent agenda. Then the next item is student activity accounts. Julie Holman. Okay, hey, the student activity accounts are operated um, by students and for students, and they are run under the agency fund or fund 60. Um, each year, according to board policy, um, the student activity accounts come to the board with the uh, student advisors identified and the, the uh, plan for those groups for the year. Um, we do not yet have the, the list that will be on the consent agenda at the end of the month, but we have attached the example from last year of what you can expect to see on next month's agenda and the list of the activities. Cool. Are there any questions? Okay. Thank you. We look forward to those. Thank you very much. Then the next item is 8.4, purchase of teacher Chromebooks. Dr. Mueller. Good evening. Tonight I wanted to um, talk to you um, and bring forward about, we obviously passed a referendum. Um, for the rollout of a one-to-one -one with our Chromebooks in the school district. And in order to keep this um, on track in, in, in a timely fashion, um, one of the pieces of information that has come about, we have a one-to-one -one implementation team that's been meeting all summer, and they're, they've come to the conclusion, you know, as teachers, they need the Chromebooks first so that they can learn the device, know how the device works, so they are able to work with their students and use it in the um, classroom as a you know tool with their students um, if we were to give the teachers and the students the device at the same time that just might not go over so well so um, in order to purchase the Chromebooks for the middle school and we would also like to do it for our high school teachers at the same time that way the high school teachers can have some time to explore and then we can work on putting in a plan into place for training for them because Time for training is, is tight. There isn't a lot of professional development time built within school days and so on. So as to be able to put a plan into place and, and have time to have this work out right. What I'm asking um, for verbal approval tonight is um, the purchase is over $50,000 for these Chromebooks for the teachers due to the fact that we aren't just getting it for middle school teachers. We wanted to do it for middle school and high school educators. So. Um, anytime you get over that $50,000 mark, they, um, our policy 672 says you should go out and get formal bids in that, have closed bids. Um, when it's below $50,000, you need three quotes. Well, um, Jan Wee, who um, worked, she, we and her worked um, closely on this, she got actually four quotes, very competitive quotes, and researched our 
um, Wisconsin Department of Administration vendor net also and found that actually the state quotes were higher than us directly getting a quote and she came up with um, a competitive quote of around 96,000 and the devices would arrive in two to three weeks and be ready for deployment where we wouldn't have to if they're all set up and ready to go and with this purchase we would be able to um, get them in our teachers hands right at the beginning of the school year so what I'm asking for can we do an exception and will the quotes be enough for us to move forward with the purchase so questions or discussion questions comments I think what you're looking for is a consensus because yeah. it's not to be voted you know, we don't have it on the consent agenda this evening right. but she wanted to bring it forward to us to have that discussion um, we could just you know I think as she indicated just purchase for the middle school and then just purchase for the high school in two separate orders if we wanted to but this may give us a little bit of an edge so Tim just yeah. a couple of questions and as, as I was looking at this you know obviously I, I totally understand needing to get to the teachers first from the training and understanding <laughs> that perfectly Correct. Is there a would there be a potential cost savings in bulk if we were to make the full purchase now and just keep those other Chromebooks not issued but you know so you're making a bigger order if we were to order all of them now is there a potential cost savings in bulk correct but that's the reason I'm coming forward the the more we order the more cost savings we receive so but when's the next order I mean aren't we oh we will be doing a student order coming up soon but I would I could what I my plan was is to go through the bid process as stated um, being that the idea would be that the students would get their devices in within about you know November December ish um, was the plan but right. would we be able to save money by doing one order now of a much bigger size well I would have to take a look into that if we would would look at adding the students devices within to this yeah. I just didn't want to push the limits beyond the policy too far and that's kind of what well, she shared with me was yeah. that maybe asking for the exemption on the teachers would be one thing but to do it on the full thing if the board is open to that I mean if you're getting that kind of well, getting that kind of savings I, I, I'm hesitant to rush it if we can save money down the road mm -hmm. and that's yeah. kind of where I'm at if you know sometimes you know there's the price break you know sometimes you get you know two for seven and three for ten kind of a thing if we can get a price break doing the full order I, I get we're in a hurry but I wouldn't want to put that ahead of a long-term cost savings to the district either correct um, what I would need to check into in that that Jan isn't here with us is the student Chromebook is a little bit different than the teacher Chromebook so I don't know if the cost savings would be a part but if it is from our same vendor I could see them giving us more of a cost savings so yeah mr. Clark so um, you do have a board policy on bidding and um, while I certainly understand what Ms. Dinger, Mettinger is uh, requesting um, what we're really ex requesting is an exception uh, to the policy that you have but only because of the extenuating circumstance of wanting to get these in the teachers hands right now um, granting an exception to the bid policy when there's no extenuating circumstance might create an expectation that the policy be revisited to see if we don't want to require bidding as frequently because it's you know what I'm saying it's just less and le mm -hmm. the more you have less pressing rationale for an exception to the policy the more the policy is what what does the policy mean and I sat on the committees when we developed these policies and um, it's only because of the extraordinary effort Jan went through mm -hmm. to get these very competitive pricing based upon the unique circumstance so um, I just would say that's a fact you need to add as you deliberate whether you want to grant additional exceptions to the policy where there is time in fact to do the bid so further thoughts discussion Kate here. Like, I 
I guess my question would be, and Jay, I'm kind of looking to you and I'm basing this on Tim's question. Um, if we expanded this to student devices, does that delay delivery for the people that need to be trained on these devices? I don't think that's a question we can answer. You probably, Dr. Oh. Mueller would probably have so does to that research that. Delay delivery for the teachers is well, what you're saying? Or no, for what the I want to make sure okay. of when I vote tonight is that as soon as I can get these into the hands of the educators, mm -hmm. the better. Right. If we, if we talk about let's also do the student devices, and I get what t Tim's saying about cost savings, does that delay the teachers having the devices in their hands? It possibly, it c possibly could, depending on the stock that is available okay. at the. Uh, because we have spoken to people already, the, and we've got this so, package kind of ready to go, so we yeah. know the teachers can get them. And do we have training set up for them at a certain date? We've been working in our one-to-one -one implementation team, and they have been working on the timeline for that training. Um, we're working on the detailed specifics okay. right now. We have a framework for and it. And then finally, when the student devices are ordered, are there discounts also because there's so many? So again, building on Tim's question, mm -hmm. do we get discounts because we order all these devices for our students? Correct. Probably. More than likely, we would get a discount for the student devices also okay. when we go to, to do that. Well, and it, it would be a bid though, so right. it would depend on what those the bids come in at and we would choose our the best bid. Um, Jan did a lot of research and reached out to other school districts um, and um, originally when we were looking into this it was you know which device do we order um, and what we found is the device that we would like to order she did contact um, the vendor specifically and they did say yep we do have that in stock if you do order that amount for our teachers we can have it with to you within two to three weeks so okay. that was all checked out thoroughly to make sure because I didn't want to bring this exception to the policy unless it could happen. Um, as far as student devices, you know, we did not check into that end of it because um, the other part is we only have so much tech staff and, you know, I'd, where we would put all the devices and what we would do sure. in the interim, I, it, it would be, we were trying to phase, you know, phase it in, but keep it, on track and get it into the teachers and students hands as soon as we could due to the you know we want the community to know how important it is that in that the referendum passed right. and I appreciate that explanation because I think that the the front line are the are the people that need to own this that will eventually help our students with how to work with these devices and that's kind of what you're asking today and I think that's critical and so, yes, I want the public to know that too, that there's a reason that there needs to be an order fast <laughs> to get them in there. You know, the referendum has been approved. Mm -hmm. There's money for that there. Um, Jan has done a wonderful job in figuring out what to do with it. Um, so I get it, but the clarification is helpful, so thanks. I just have one more question about, I feel like there's a couple different questions being asked, like. I think Tim's focusing on the financial savings of it, financial savings of it. Um, so if we were to get an exception to be able to order these Chromebooks for the students, would we necessarily have to get them at the same time or could, it's more about payment, you know, paying the vendor for the devices, but not obviously getting the educator ones initially, but then when we're ready or when they're available, those would come later. And, seems like they like it when you can pay ahead you know pay ahead and you may not get the product till later but that could be the potential cost savings but do we know how much and the student books will cost uh, I do not know off the top of okay. my head no um, but I guess the the determinant here basically is um, I didn't 
you know, we have a policy, and I hate to go against policy because there's a reason we have the policy, but because of the circumstance and the timeline, you know, coming in in July, um, starting this role and realizing, oh boy, we need to get this in place soon if we're going to have it, you know, so that students are able to use their devices during the school year um, is why I brought this forward. Um, I, I, I guess for, I understand the financial piece, but we're going to be ordering quite a, a large amount. Um, I'd say, is it eight, 600, 800 middle school? So about 900 devices of student Chromebooks, which is larger than our teacher order, which we'll get a very good, if we do a bid process, we'll get good pricing, I would assume, on that. Now, would the specifications of the Chromebooks be different, the teacher they, ones yes, versus the student ones? So. Um, they're very similar, but they just have different screen size. The teachers would wanted a little larger screen size. So well, there would be some changes yes. so I think I would be comfortable with just doing the exception for the the teachers educators I think as Jay pointed out there's mm -hmm. a, a reason for that and if there's possible because it's if it's 800 at the middle school eight to 900 at the middle school it's another 1063 or something like that at the high school you know you the potential for some good savings would be there still mm -hmm. Dr. Or Mr. Clark one I'd like yeah. <laughs> um, one um, spin-off on Tim's idea I think we can use these negotiated prices where we really worked hard between the vendors and compared mm -hmm. it to the state vendor bidding I think we can use it as a leverage point in the bidding so can you imagine now when we bid the larger volume of student Chromebooks we know what the state bid is and what the competitive negotiated pricing is we share that with the bidders when they're preparing their proposals and we don't be afraid to reject them all mm -hmm. and say we know what you can do with the volume that we purchased for the teachers we're expecting a little so I'm not so sure that this can't be used in some way yeah. to leverage better yeah. pricing for us mm -hmm. so is there a consensus mm -hmm. to move yes, forward and I think yeah. with Dr. Mueller working with Mr. Clark I think we're I'm still hesitant okay. just because it we're doing a lot of speculating mm -hmm. and I, okay. I I don't like to speculate I like facts and information anybody who's worked with me long enough knows I like that so I'm hesitant only because we're doing a lot of assumptive and speculation and that's the only reason I'm hesitant but it looks like the majority of the board is okay. has a consensus to be able to move forward for All the right. exemption so right. thank you and I apologize for having to do that and um, <laughs> We will plan better in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. So that does move us on to consent agenda items. There are six items on the consent agenda. Um, I would note, um, Dr. Mueller, maybe you wanted to mention the agenda was amended because of the personnel report. Yes. Um, can um, you just make a brief comment? I would love to. The reason we amended the personnel report is we have um, hired a new administrator. It is our new director of information and technology, um, Greg Kruger, and he will be joining us on August 24th. Um, we're very excited about the quick turnaround time, and he comes from us to us from Rhinelander. He is currently a network administrator up there and does much work in the technology department there. So he will probably be at our next board meeting, so you'll be able great. to meet him. So. It'll be great. So it'll be, and I know you worked with him on getting here that early that fast and he was really interested in coming so that mm -hmm. says a lot about his motivation to be here so um, with that are there any consent agenda items you wanted to have separated otherwise I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as published so moved is there a second second uh, any discussion Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda items as presented please signify by saying aye Aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Before we move on, is anybody else having issues with getting online in their Dropbox? I am. Yes. I it's delaying. I it's did like last taking meeting, forever. but to 
Tonight it's working Tonight fine. it's working. Yes. Last meeting I had trouble. And I can get online sometimes, but then I can't print okay. like I've always been okay. able to do. I can't view anything in my Dropbox. Yeah, tonight, because I looked at my Dropbox on a, on a different computer, so my documents haven't downloaded to this, and so I'm having trouble. So we'll... I'm not the only one. I know notice that Anita's on on her cell yeah, phone. Yeah, I can see it on my phone, but it's <laughs> not on my. It always gives me comfort to know it's not just me. Okay. That other people <laughs> know that as well. So we'll welcome the new technology person yes. on the 24th. It may have been something that happened after the the outing. I know we had the yeah. you had the power yeah. outage, so maybe okay. something happened with that. We so will check in tomorrow and see what's going on. Okay. Old school hard yeah. copy. Yeah. <laughs> So then I will, it's board reports and discussion. I'll call on board members in the order of the roll call. Um, ask you to present any co comments or committee reports. I know committees are starting to organize. I don't know that any have been held yet, but Lisa Collins, anything for this evening? No, I don't, I don't have anything. Okay, Mr. Menninger. Nothing tonight. My countdown is over. <laughs> <laughs> but what? Thank God. Oh, thank God. But what nice coverage they had about Mr. King. I oh, thought that was really nice yes. to yes. see that, that coverage is, about him. That, so. that is a mixed emotions. Yeah. I'm like very happy for him, but yeah. uh, sad at the same time. Yep. So. And Jeff Young, anything on the student representative behalf? Um, Corn Fest is this weekend, right? Yep. So uh, uh, go there and support the community. It's really fun. I'll be volunteering myself uh, shucking corn, so oh, wow. that'll be a fun time. <laughs> you think? Board members yeah. get free corn? What, what, <laughs> what group are you volunteering as? Uh, the Boy Scouts. Oh. They do it every year. So this is my like ninth year, I think, oh. doing it. Good. Anything else? Um, no, not yet. School starts, you'll have lots of stuff for us. <laughs> then Anita Jagosinski. Um. I don't have anything related to board um, reports or discussion really or um, committee notes, but I will note that a former Holman High School um, graduate, namely my daughter, is starting her new job as a school employee at Burlington High School as a guidance counselor. So I just wanted to give a shout out to her and I know she can't see this, but maybe she'll pull it up on YouTube someday. <laughs> <laughs> so I know mom's proud of her. So um, thank you for educating my children so well here in Holman. And, and um, boy, Daddy Shepherd goes out and was my daughter's guidance counselor and now my daughter's a counselor. So Aww. it all goes around. Yes, it does. Kate Mayer. Anita reminds me there are so many of our daughters. I have five daughters, and many of them have been influenced by DECA and how they chose jobs in this district. I am so grateful to the teachers. Um, I did want to just say um, um, condolences to Isaiah Jones's family. His memorial is coming up in a couple of weeks, um, and that's something, if any of you can make it, please please consider that. I think it's a Saturday, right? I'm not completely sure. Um, student achievement um, has some issues, that, new issues to deal with this year because of the state budget. We have, um, we have to change policies, basically, and that isn't always an easy thing to do. We're looking at several things, and I won't go into those tonight, We'll have reports on those later, and we'll we'll schedule them as the months go on. But um, do, I'm just going to say there's a burden there because we're ahead of our game with all of our policies. You know, typically we have very few to do every year because we're so in line with our schedule. But this year we've got some new stuff going on, so there may be delays with other stuff that that goes on and we'll see how that happens probably not because the committee is the best and we'll, we'll just get her done but yeah. <laughs> great okay well and i really don't have anything either i know this evening i had before the meeting had a meeting with the community collaborative community center and there's some really exciting things happening with that um I know we're talking about a partnership with the YMCA and with Gunderson, some things that are coming through that you'll see, and a big announcement 
next week on a contribution that came through and that's going to be solidified and uh, as a school district I know we've always been very supportive of this and wanted to try to do what we could and you know offered land and and that kind of thing but I know that there are needs in the district that um, I've been approached individually and the people have talked about um, with Lori Kessler and and Dr. Mueller and I are going to sit down with Lori and, and talk about the project and so um, identifying what our future needs might be could possibly be how that we could partner with the community center in the future. Dan McHugh, who is one of the leading forces, is celebrating his 50th class reunion this weekend at Cornfest and it just reminds me, you know, of 50 years um, of well there's been a lot more than 50 years but just the the folks that have come out of Holman and are still supporting Holman after all those years and the commitment to the community it's really fun to see that and um, the work I'm doing the volunteering I'm doing on that collaborative center just reinforces that and then as Dan's talking about his 50th class reunion union it's like people once they're a Holman Viking always a Holman Viking <laughs> I think there you may go on to other things but even if you're working at Burlington there's always that Holman Viking <laughs> when in you're you. a Burlington demon yeah <laughs> so so that's just kind of nice to see um, I would just note that the correspondence went through. We had, it looked like Mr. Brown was at the meeting last time. There's a note to him. We have upcoming um, board meetings. The 24th is our regular board meeting, and then the 26th is the opening day ceremony for the school district. Um, I know Dr. Mueller is working on a, a great and exciting opening um, session, so I, I look forward to seeing that. Um, September 14th is our next board meeting, the first one in September. We do have in your folder, if you can open it, the cycle for um, uh, the policy and administrative rule revisions. I think in there they tried to identify those rules that are we need to, must kind of look at, should look at, that kind of thing. And I know you've got it printed out. Did you want to make any other comments about that? Or? Well, I just wanted you to review it. And if you have any um, recommendations to let us know in that and then Christina will follow up with each chair with their uh, respective list of policies coming up soon so that as a reminder those policies are it's kind of done in the timeline and the schedule and so every three to five years we try to review every policy and so if you've been on a committee for a couple of years you may have already reviewed those and those continue to come up um, anything under board meeting reflection it's been a quick one, unanticipated. Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. OK, discussion? Uh, all those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Gary's not even here to vote nay. I know. <laughs> <laughs>